The following program does not offer personal medical advice. Please consult your doctor before using any treatment or product we cover. Welcome to Go to Health Media with your host, Jonathan Marks. We provide a welcoming environment where experts educate you on important health topics, answer your questions, and provide information from which you can benefit in consultation with your doctor. You can visit and subscribe to the show at gotohealthmedia.com. And now, here is Jonathan Marks. Hey, this is Jonathan Marks from Go To Health Media. Welcome back to another episode. We have great news if you suffer from eczema. There's a new once daily steroid free cream that can help manage and control eczema. So stay tuned to learn more. 26 million people in the US suffer from eczema. That's one in 12 of us. And with summertime and heat and the products we use, these can all cause flare ups. Eczema or atopic dermatitis is a chronic recurring inflammatory skin disease. It presents as red and intensely itchy rashes that can occur anywhere on the body. With us today to discuss eczema and how to best treat it, especially during these hot summer months, is Adam Freeman, MD, FAAD. He's a board certified dermatologist. Dr. Adam Friedman is professor and chair of dermatology at the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. He's also the director of translational research and the director of the supportive oncodermatology program in the Department of Dermatology. Welcome to the program, Dr. Friedman. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me here. Sure. So let's start off with a simple question. What is eczema? And tell us what are the symptoms and even some of the side effects of those symptoms? Yeah, no, you teed it up very nicely. This is an incredibly common chronic relapsing inflammatory skin disease, probably the second most common just behind acne. But just as it's common, it's commonly impactful, disabling and destructive to quality of life and even our skin. The clinical presentation is extraordinarily varied and gender, age, even skin tone can impact the appearance of this condition, which can make making that diagnosis a challenge. However, to me, I feel like there's one unifying theme across the spectrum, which is an itch that feels incredible to scratch. And that kind of drive to itch, scratch, itch, scratch will only make the condition worse, as well as add to some of the ostracism associated with this condition. It's well documented because people see you scratching, they stay away or they say, hey, just stop scratching, it'll get better. And because of all this, this is why I've partnered with Arcutus to raise awareness about this very common condition, but even more importantly, discuss how can we get it under control. Good. And let's talk a little bit about how summer weather and the heat can affect yep. these flare-ups. So this is a year-round condition, but notably in the summertime, the actual heat can make itching worse. Sweating from all that heat is, you know, sweats and irritant, that can certainly exacerbate the condition. And even things we apply to our skin, like sunscreen and bug spray, those can worsen an active flare or bring out the next one. And often these individuals, they're not just worrying about the moment, they're worrying about when that next shoe is going to drop, that next flare. So all these things that can contribute ultimately leading to a not so fun summer. And so it's really important we get this under control so people can live their lives. And how long do these flare-ups last typically? Oh, it is so variable. And depending on the severity of the condition, someone could have easily 12 to 14 flares a year. And depending on what they're doing or what assistance they have from the medical community, these flares can last weeks, if not even longer. Uh, but of course, if you have the right things, if you have the right guidance, you can not only get them under control, but hopefully prevent them. Good. So let's talk a little bit about that, getting things under yep. control and what ways you can care for your skin if you're having eczema or a flare up. So being it's a chronic condition, we need a chronic management strategy. So basic rules apply to any level of severity. These include using mild cleansers or ones that are designed for eczema. However, if you're having a flare, no soap to those areas whatsoever until it's doing better. But more importantly, applying a moisturizer to damp skin, not dry skin, because we want to lock that moisture in so that the skin can turn over the right way and form as best it can so it can protect us from the outside world. 
Now that said, this doesn't always cut it for many individuals with eczema, and that's where FDA approved therapies, whether they be topical or advanced systemics, meaning they work from the inside out, that's where they can really step in and address the underpinnings of disease. So I've seen a lot of commercials on TV for various kinds of medicine for eczema. So there's a new one on the market. How can it affect eczema patients in a positive way? Yeah, you know, we're in the era of eczema. You asked you asked that question 15, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have much of an answer for you. But the most recently FDA approved topical for atopic dermatitis is Zareve, a reflumalas 0.15% cream, which can be applied once a day. And I will say once versus twice a day certainly improves adherence and long-term use. It is meant for mild to moderate eczema and can be used six and up. And given this is a condition that doesn't really care what age you are, it will affect you, that, that's really important. Having an FDA-approved medication means it's been studied in individuals with this condition and at this severity level. Over a thousand individuals in the phase three program. And what that translates into is we know what it's gonna do, how it's gonna work, but also we know about safety and tolerability. And overall, this was a very well-tolerated medication. The most common side effects included nausea, headache, and site application pain. But this was only in a few percent of this large cohort of individuals studied, meaning that patients can feel confident that if they use this, they will tolerate it and they can use it throughout the course of their condition, which for many can be lifelong. Got it. I know you're very familiar with this, but just for our audience, you mentioned phase three, and this is part of a clinical trial process. Can you very briefly describe phases one, two, and three so we understand the process medications go through before they get an approval? Absolutely. You know, it's so funny. I have patients say, oh, it's a new medicine. I don't want to be a guinea pig. Well, they've missed that opportunity because to your point, there are three phases of for FDA approval. Phase one is purely for safety, toxicity. And this is usually only in a handful of healthy individuals to make sure that something isn't dangerous. Phase two is more to identify what is the best dose of medication for a particular disease state. And so this is a larger study, but really what we need is the phase three, which takes the dose that seemed to work the best in the smaller study mm -hmm. and apply this in a larger number of individuals so that when we say, X percent of patients, for example, will achieve this result that we feel confident that anyone we treat will get, will potentially get to that level. So a phase three is so important because we want to include a wide array of individuals suffering with a condition so we know what to expect in the real world. And that's what we did here with Zareba Reflumalas Cream. Great. So thank you very much for explaining that, because if you're trying, uh, you said a very important thing, if you're trying a quote unquote new medication, you're not one of the first <laughs> to try it. It's been through clinical trials and it's been proven with Correct. a lot of people to have a certain effect at a certain dose level. So you're saying uh, take this medication. It's topical. It's not an injection. It's Correct. topical. Do it once a day. Do you need a prescription for this or is this over the counter? This is a prescription medication, absolutely. Okay, and where can we go to learn more? So obviously coming to someone like me, a board certified dermatologist, but even easier would be to go to Zareve, Z-O-R-Y-V-E.com for more information about the medication as well as atopic dermatitis. Great, and spell that for me once again, doctor. Z-O-R-Y-V-E. Great. Z-O-R-Y-V-E, Zorive. It's a new medication that's just come on the market. It's a topical once a day that can really help you with up to moderate. If you have severe Correct. eczema, what, what are the recommendations for that? Yep. So depending on severity, and fortunately, we have a whole host of options. We do have systemic medications that, and you mentioned before, injectables, for example, we even have some oral medications that are indicated for more severe disease. But I do want to call out one important thing. In the clinical trial, 75% of those studied were moderate. And if we look at the guidelines, even moderate individuals are eligible for systemic therapy. So the fact that we can improve the eczema in someone who's moderate really says a lot about the efficacy of a medication. Wonderful. That's great. Good. So we're talking with Dr. Adam Friedman. He's a professor and chair of dermatology at the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. And he's been talking with us today about a new steroid-free, and that's important, steroid-free yep. cream that can help you with your eczema symptoms. Thanks so much for being with us today, doctor. We appreciate the information.
Thank you for tuning in this week to Go To Health Media. Be sure to join Jonathan Marks and another health expert next time. You can also catch the program on your favorite podcast platform. Until our next show, be sure to visit us on the web at gotohealthmedia.com and elevate your life.